Hey everyone, it's Matt Mover and I'm back and this time I'm talking about Metal Gear Online. I've been playing the single player experience and it's been really really interesting from a gameplay standpoint. Not so much from a story perspective, but definitely from gameplay mechanics and the kind of ways you can infiltrate bases and take out enemies. I thought how they're going to make this into a competitive multiplayer environment with all these strange abilities you have and equipment and how they're going to really bring that in to online to make it a really great and unique experience. Well, to put it simply, the online is somewhat scaled back from the single player mode, especially from the map sizes. They are pretty big, some of them, but a lot of other things aren't explained very clearly. So here I am making this video just to explain a few basic things into Metal Gear Online that can maybe help you understand some of the different areas there are and how possibly to play better and maybe even enjoy the game if you're not quite sure what to do. Well, first off, you've got three different types of classes you can play in the game, and just make sure you try and understand the, the strengths and weaknesses of those classes. That could maybe help you play the game differently, and in fact, they are very different. So let's start first off with the Infiltrator. Infiltrators, they're most suited for close quarters combat. They're quite useful because they have stealth camouflage. They're usually faster than most of the other classes but they've got poor endurance in terms of the damage they can take. So try and avoid direct confrontations, move around from the side and use sort of light weapons, more like pistols and shotguns. They're better suited for the infiltrator. Next up, you've got the scout. Scouts are quite balanced in the sense that they've got a good ability for accuracy and long range combat because they've got sniper rifles. They're also better at gathering intel from a distance. So what that means is when you've got your binocular scope out, when you hold R1, it's quicker. It takes a lot less time to mark enemies. They're quite good at mid-range combat, so they're pretty good in terms of when you start the perks you have for being good with the assault rifles. So all in all, the scout is quite actually a good place to start. Lastly, you've got the Enforcer. Now, Enforcers are quite essentially heavily equipped soldiers, walking tanks, if you will. I mean, they, they're not the actual D-Walkers, but they're a class that's very heavily armoured. They specialise in powerful weapons and they're good in open combat. And the kind of weapon unlock tree they have essentially complements that very well. They've got high endurance, they can take a lot of damage, but they're quite slow. It's good to equip them with heavy weapons and really suppress enemies. That's what they're designed for. Now, once you've done all the other stuff like customizing your character, the appearance and the name and all this kind of stuff, you also get eventually to a point where you play online, you can customize loadout options. One of the most important things about customizing loadout options, aside from the fact that you can choose what type, what type of weapons you want, but more importantly, you can actually dictate how heavy your character is. And essentially, the less equipment and attachments you carry, the lighter you're going to be. And the lighter you're going to be, the faster you're going to be. So if you have things like a cardboard box that you're not planning to use, unequip it because that's about half a kilo of weight. That can make a difference. Other things like support weapons, if you're not really using hand grenades, I mean, I would recommend using them. But if you're not really using things like that, then don't equip them. Otherwise, also the same thing applies with secondary weapons like pistols. If you're finding that you're not really using them when you're playing, then there's no point. So unequip it and just stick with your main weapon. Other special items in your perks category, like night vision goggles and stealth camouflage, which is a perk on its own, not an item, that actually adds to your weight as well. So coming on to the perks, what you need to be made aware of is that you've got four perk slots. Now, each perk in, on its own has a different level, and as you play further, you unlock a better level of that perk. So let's say you've got Fulton level one and stealth CQC level one as well, and other things like that. Well, you've got four slots. So if you get to, let's say, stealth camo as a perk uh, being level three, that will take three out of your four slots out. And if you get weapons level three as well, you'd find you'd only really be able to equip level one because three of those slots have been taken out by your stealth camo. So try and play around with that. Usually, you know, you might go to level two of one perk, level two of another perk to try and be as balanced as possible and things like that. And here's where having different loadouts helps. Try and customize as many loadouts as possible because you can change them in game. It isn't actually expressly specified that you can change your loadout in game, 
but you actually can and I'll tell you how to do it. So in the beginning of the game, once you've selected what type of class you want to play, which is just above where you select the music, you can tapping left or right, as long as you've created the class, will enable you to select from either Enforcer or Infiltrator to Scout. Once you're happy with that and you've selected that, you can't actually change that. Once you're in game, that's done. But in terms of the individual loadout that you selected, yes you can. And how you do that is, once your player's been killed, or been full turned and you, you know, you're about to uh, get back into the game, what you've got to do is, as the spawn point selection screen is up, you need to tap R1. And when you tap R1, you also find then the screen suddenly changes and you can select different loadouts and then select that and then choose the spawn point you want to get to back into the game. You can also try experimenting different attachments for weapons on different loadouts. So for instance, the flashlight, you can try and have that as a loadout. So when it's nighttime, you can have select your flashlight for your loadout on the fly, little things like that. But obviously bear in mind, like I mentioned about the weight category earlier, the more attachments you have, the more that's gonna weigh you down. You do get some really cool attachments and useful ones like suppressors, but obviously bear in mind, things like suppressors, they'll add to your weight, but they won't last forever. They'll probably last about just about a magazine's worth. They are handy, but they're only handy for about 20 rounds, and then after that, it's gone. So keep that in mind. If you think you're gonna be shooting a lot, and a suppressor's not really gonna make that much difference overall, there's no real point adding that one to your weight. Now, another thing about customization is that you can customize the look of your character, and that's by the kind of dress, the colors, and things like that. Obviously, try and get a color that's a camouflage look to the, the levels, usually like a dark brown or a kind of dark deserty color for most of the maps in the game. But at the same time, most of the equipment that you get in the game is really superficial. It doesn't make a difference. Even things like heavy armor and things like that that you see on that that you need to spend GP on, there's no real point in worrying about that too much because it doesn't actually affect the gameplay. So. Personally, I wish that it would affect the gameplay and it could make a difference because I find this whole GP thing pointless other than just looking silly and things like that. There's no real point to really worry about it. As long as you've got your loadout, that side of things mainly sorted out. The gear side of the selection screen isn't really as important. Where it does get important is when you get to level 37 and you get to the ascension. Now what that does is that unlocks something for you and then you've got to start from level zero again. And usually, for instance, in the case of the infiltrator, that's the, the sneaking suit. And actually, little that sneaking suit that you unlock on level 37 can actually make a difference because it does make you slightly quieter and you're slightly harder to hear. But aside from that, it's not a game-breaking difference. So again, I wouldn't worry about that too much. If you are one of those players who is concerned about how your character looks in terms of gear, then just keep in mind you need GP for that, which is the currency. And one of the best ways to get GP is obviously by winning games, but you get more GP if you win auto match games. So for instance, if you auto match into a game mode without selecting a server, if you if your team wins, you get 100 GP. If you lose, you get 50. But if you don't auto match, if you win, you get 20. And if you lose, you get 10. And that's a huge difference. So keep that in mind. Now, what you definitely do want to do is get as many points as possible so you upgrade your character in-game and that enables you to unlock the attachments and things like that faster. Now, one of the best ways of doing that is not actually by killing enemies, but by playing non-lethally. Each stun and takedown you do and each falton you do gives you a heck of a lot more points than a kill does. And also, what you want to do is mark as many enemies as possible because each time you mark an enemy, you get 50 points and each time you, uh, an enemy gets killed that you have marked, you get an additional 50 points as well. So keep that in mind. Try to use things like e-locators and try and use your binoculars to keep enemies marked. That not only gives you more points, but that also helps your team to win. As you progress, you unlock little cool things like plushy snares and Fulton cannons and other little support weapons that can help you. It's really up to you to decide how best to use those and you'll really find out normally by playing really experienced and good players how to use them. I mean, one of the ways to use the Fulton cannon best is if someone's shooting at you, hide around the corner, put a Fulton cannon, move out of the area, and as soon as the enemy goes around that corner thinking you might still be there, then, oh, they've just been Fulton cannoned out. Really frustrating when that happens to you. It's happened to me quite a few times. And when you play, get these things unlocked, play around with them, and really you're gonna find out how it best works for you. There's not much I can say about it, but for me, one of the best support weapons you can get is either the E-Locator or the Fulton Cannon if you're playing more defensively. So try and get those as soon as possible. 
I personally rate the e-locator more because you can throw them when you think you know an enemy is in a certain location, you throw them towards that area, you can mark that enemy and also usually another couple of enemies that are nearby. So that really helps your team and also each time you mark an enemy you get points so that helps you progress up the progression tree much quicker. Now one of the main things to be aware of is noise. You've got a map and on the top left corner of the screen enemies and friendlies can see where noise is being generated from this also includes sprinting so try and avoid sprinting because that's going to make a mark on the map and enemies can look towards that and at the same time firing don't fire unnecessarily because that's also going to create marks on the map and i usually use those marks to throw my e-locators down or try and look in those areas and mark a few enemies so again the main area is trying to play stealthy and trying to avoid making noise as much as possible the same thing applies when you communicate. So when you tap L1, you can communicate and say a certain saying from the selection screen. But where this is important is that when you do communicate, it actually shows up on the minimap which character on the map from your teams is actually communicating. And this is actually quite helpful if you're being interrogated or just about to be full turned by an enemy. Keep tapping L1. Hopefully if there's a teammate nearby, they'll see on the map that's you that's calling for help. They'll, they should look to that location and obviously if they see a red balloon and you being full turned out, hopefully that will give them the heads up just in time so they can look, aim and take out the balloon that's going to be full turning you. So keep that in mind, communication is actually really important in those situations. Now also just coming back to weapons, some weapons have different levels of bullet print penetration to others and that's really important to know when you're in the customization screen because if you're facing against enemies that are slightly better armoured or if you've got enemies that are behind thin cover, actually some weapons can penetrate through. So try and keep in mind whether your weapons are able to do that so you know whether you're wasting ammunition and revealing your position unnecessarily or not. Now when you start a match, you'll also find that there's D walkers that are available right in front of your spawn points. If you know how to use them, get on them and really mow down the enemy and try and take out the enemy D walkers first. But keep in mind they're not indestructible. If you're facing off against a D-Walker, try to get the enemy moving away from you so you can hit them from behind because they're usually exposed. If you can't hit them from behind and they're coming towards you, then essentially just let rip. Try and shoot it as many times as you can because you're actually weakening it and the more times it gets shot, the weaker it is. It usually takes about two to three magazines full to actually blow up a D-Walker, so it's not actually that hard to take them out. But at the same time, you want to keep in mind that you're also not invulnerable when you're on a D-Walker. So try and move around as much as you possibly can to make yourself a really hard target to hit. And also doing so makes it hard for enemies to take you off the back and seek you see you. So keep moving, but at the same time, try to keep your back exposed to the enemy for as short a period as possible. Keep in mind, you have to actually aim to spin the weapons gun for the D-Walker. And every time you do that, it actually takes a little bit of time so if you think you see an enemy running around the corner try and aim in advance so you can get ready to fire off straight away and also keep in mind that when you do aim you're also going to be moving around a bit slower than you normally would so don't be aiming all the time because that will really slow you down and also make you much much more easier to sneak around the back of and get CQC'd. Speaking of CQC if you see a, a hand sign that signals that you should do it but you can't see an enemy around it probably is because the enemy's right there but they're stealth camoed so tap that r2 button hopefully you can take them out before they take you out and actually it really works really well because it's a good indicator that there's an enemy right there and your cqc move will actually work so tap that button as soon as you see it because the chances are the enemy probably has got that same button but they haven't really noticed that it's there or maybe they're facing away from you and they're camouflaged but they're not looking that direction so they don't even know you're there so tap it, take the enemy out. If you think there's enemies nearby, before you even start bothering to Fulton, move away and start firing at that enemy. Take them out and then start Fultoning, otherwise you'll find yourself CQC'd, Fultoned, and the player you've CQC'd will simply get woken up by the enemy team's player, essentially making your move pointless. One little tip I have is to change your camera sensitivity settings to, to as high as possible. That really does help because the amount of times you'll be aiming and shooting and enemies will be running around, you'll find that you need to be as sensitive as possible so you can pan really quickly to take those enemies out. You'll find that when you play Metal Gear Online, most enemies will be running around and sprinting so it's really hard to actually shoot people. So what you want to do is, you don't want to actually fire 
until you know that the enemy's got nowhere really to run left or right and you can really take him out with that magazine. Usually engagement distances are quite important in that and if you're using an assault rifle you want to be no further than really 10 to 15 meters away to engage that enemy otherwise there's so many cover opportunities and the simple fact that they, they can use that dive and roll option to get away from you means that you want to be as close as possible even with a weapon you think would be more capable at longer range. And use that in mind for yourself. So if you're running around and you see an enemy shooting at you, try and do a hard left or a hard right and dive out of the way and then keep sprinting away so you can quickly recover and catch that enemy on a reload, come back at them and take them out around the corner. Now you've got three different game modes to choose from and that's Bounty Hunter, Cloak and Dagger and Comp Control. Bounty Hunter is by far my favourite and that's essentially a simple team deathmatch but with the twist of being able to Fulton enemies out and each enemy you Fulton gives, you, gives your team a point and every team or a ticket rather and every team member of yours that that player has killed he translates to something known as a bounty so if they've got like a 5 bounty which means they've killed 5 of your team you Fulton that player out you're going to get 6 tickets onto your team so keep that in mind the more tickets you have gives you a fighting chance to reduce their tickets down to zero and helping your team win the game. And obviously, if you can Fulton them out, you're gonna get even more points for your own character. But that's the twist. So at the same time, if you play non-lethally, you're basically reducing that bounty that you have on your, on your own head. So it really twists the gameplay around. Me personally, I play lethally and it is my most favorite game mode. Next up, you have Cloak and Dagger. Now what Cloak and Dagger basically is, is an infiltration game where you need to take enemy discs from their base and bring it back to your base to get uploaded. It's a kind of way of stealth infiltration on a team level and there are little tips and tricks you can use like when you have the wormhole generator equipped with a team buddy, uh, if that team buddy stays near your base, you get the disc, quickly wormhole back to them and upload the disc. So there are ways to actually beat this quite quickly. It's not personally my favorite game mode, but it is quite an interesting twist on the Metal Gear kind of infiltration, but on a multiplayer team level. Finally, you've got Com Control, which is basically a form of domination of controlling area points in a map. It's not my favorite game mode, but it is a good game mode to get points quickly if you're not very good at killing enemies or faultening enemies because you can just move around from point to point try and catch your points and just try and keep away from where the enemy are and you'll quickly get points and rank up that way and hopefully in the process you should find that you're trying to you're basically improving and your sort of skills at combat and firing are improving so if you're a new player try and get on comp control first play a few rounds hopefully that will help you improve for the other game modes cloak and dagger and bounty hunter so that was my basic Metal Gear Online tips and tricks video. If you like what you see and want to see more, keep subscribed. See you all again soon. Matt Mover, signing off.